number one. They are 0 and 18 all time. Let's take a look at our starting lineups. They are presented by Jeep. In addition to Edie, keep an eye on Braden Smith for Purdue. Are winning the way that Northwestern's winning. Everybody wants. Nicholson. Knocks it back to Audige and Bowie will bring it across for the Wildcats. Zach Eady and some ball screen action to see how he's going to respond like this right here. Audige to Nicholson who throws down the first two of the game. I love the attack from Northwestern. Go right at the big fella. See how he's going to defend. He was a little reluctant to challenge Nicholson on that dunk. There's Ethan Morton inside to Edie. Northwestern doubles down low to first, and he answers with a dunk of his own as the double was a little late to come there, Steven. Yeah, that was Boo Boo. He's supposed to seal off that backside. Caleb first continuing his inspired play. And now a steal by Morton, an outstanding defender. Shovels it to first through the lane, up and in. Four quick points for Caleb first, who's coming off. A double-double, and Purdue takes its first lead. The thing about Caleb is he doesn't need plays run for him. He can still score double figures because he plays so hard. Great compliment to Zach Eady. Here's Bowie. Take the open two and hit it. First two for Northwestern's leading score. Looks like Braden Smith lost his footing. You see him checking his shoe there. Roger Ayers checking with him. He may have to get an equipment shift here pretty soon. Fletcher Lawyer, now Edie. This time the double comes much quicker. Now to Morton. Now the floater off glass. No good by Smith. Battle for And it will go. To now as we take a look at Chris Collins in his 10th year as the head coach of Wildcats picked up win number 150. On the road against Ohio State, they won successive road games against the Badgers and Buckeyes. A lawyer down low had it knocked away, and Robbie Barron has it for the Cats. See, there's an aspect to Northwestern that I think people don't realize, Dave. This is a physical ball club. They'll knock heads with you when necessary. Ooh, he's got Evie on him. Now Barry will pull up the side. Barry that rims out. Now Barry been in a little bit of a slump after that enormous game at Nebraska. Smith stopping and starting out of the corner for three. Not there from first. Edie battles for the board, but Barry tracks it down for the Wildcats. Well, Weston is really good, Dave. When on the defensive end, they've been very consistent all season. But when they can get a third score, because Boo Booey and Chase Aldeeds are going to get there. And they can develop a third score like Varnheiser last game. They're very difficult to stop. Here is Barron on the drive. Head fake on first. That one doesn't go. Barron would be a candidate for yes. that third score. I agree. There's Smith again coming off a fabulous game against Iowa. Lawyer has been outstanding as a freshman as well. And Fletcher Lawyer. Who had 17 in that win over the Hawks gets his first two. I like what Fletcher Lawyer is starting to understand when Northwestern is in that defensive rotation. He's putting it on the deck and getting to the rim instead of selling for a jumper. There's Bowie. Allen with Nicholson. Hey, that's going to be there. As long as Purdue continues to guard the way that they're guarding, that's going to be there. Side to Edie. Nice ball movement. Lawyer for three. That one does not go. Edie battles for the board, but Barry tracks it down. Yeah, Zach Edie gets 23% of the offensive rebound opportunities. That is the highest in the country as Adige misses a three. So, huge challenge for Chris Collins team to keep him off the glass. And Matthew Nicholson is mouth is wide open telling me that he's a little bit tired right now. Edie misses the dunk, but he is fouled, and 
Read a great article this week by Matt Norlander of CBS. Did a fabulous profile on Edie. And even Edie himself said this year has just been surreal for him as he misses the free throw. And Matt had a good nugget that really put it into perspective. He pointed out that David Jenkins, who is his teammate, has been playing college basketball longer than Zach Edie has been playing organized yes. basketball. Yes. Edie hitting one of two. Just incredible story to emerge the way that he has from the 429th ranked player in his class to the front runner for national player of the year a lot of hard work and a, and a lot of credit goes to brandon brantley the assistant at purdue who helps develop all of these bigs that have come through this program in the last decade well it's just one of their last six from the field nice ball movement Gillis out of the corner and he hits Mason Gillis who went 9 of 12 against Penn State from behind the arc gives Purdue a four point lead. Yeah, such a unique player in terms of being an undersized four but he shoots the basketball like a two guard especially from that corner pocket. Ooh boo he got some friendly fire there he got an elbow from Titus Verhoeven his own teammate and misses the three. Mustard 0 of 3 early on here behind the arc. Oh, Deej has got to be careful guarding Braden Smith about being too aggressive. Here's Gillis again, and Mason Gillis getting hot off the bench. Six points, and Purdue is extended to a seven-point lead on this 7-0 run. So you rotate Mason Gillis and Caleb first. They give you different looks, but both of them are effective. Gillis really with the hot hand here early on. Here's Bowie, moving in on Edie, gets it up on the cuts and lays it in. That is treacherous territory in there. And you see Braden Smith lost his footing again. He's got different shoes on right now than he started the game, and he's still slipping on the floor, trying to keep up with Boo Boo. That's defense by Brooks Barnheiser, who is a Lafayette, Indiana native, as we check in with Andy. You know, what's interesting with the way Northwestern's going to defend Zach Eady, and Matt Painter told us this earlier, Dave, they don't have to change the way they do it because they double the post normally. So that's what they're going to do about Zach Eady. They obviously have to take care of the perimeter and not doing as great a job right now as we're seeing, but they didn't have to change their game plan to defend Zach Eady because this is what they normally do, double the post, and there you see it right there. Great ball movement from the Boilers. Smith reloads, not there, tipped around. Barnheiser's got it for the Wildcats. Coming off a career game. Now Adige to Bowie. Barnheiser was fabulous in that game against Ohio State. Poured in 19. Barry with a floater, doesn't go. Tips it back up and in. Boy, great job on the second rebound. Ty Barry, the shooter, always knows best where the ball's going to end up. Nice finish. Here's Smith dribbling into a three and hitting. Braden Smith with his first points in Purdue getting hot here behind the arc. I think the equipment change is working out. <laughs> <laughs> you get one of those threes to drop. All's well with the shoes after that. You know, if you're Northwestern, you got to pick your poison. You're going to double team the post. But you can't stop everything from this offensive juggernaut. Trying to challenge in the inside. How about Titus Verhoeven? You're going to need some unusual performances to beat the number one team in the country. Verhoeven providing that here early. On the drive, there is a foul on the Wildcats, and that will send Smith to the line. Ball goes against Barnheiser. That is his first. A Wednesday hoops doubleheader beginning with the Spartans and the Gophers. Then these Wildcats back on the floor for another huge matchup. They get Trace Jackson Davis of Indiana. All starts with the tip off show coming your way Wednesday on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. How about those Indiana Hoosiers? Go in and shut down Michigan in the last four minutes of the game to come out with a one-point victory. Tremendous defensive effort by Indiana. Really a devastating loss for Michigan. 
as Smith hits the first free throw. Really a fabulous story. A guy who picks Purdue over Montana, Appalachian State, and Toledo. And has come in as a freshman and been one of the better point guards in the Big Ten. Matt Painter knows what he's doing in terms of looking at players that fit his system. Not necessarily highly ranked. You know, they don't have to look a certain way. But I remember seeing him, David, in the fall when I went over to West Lafayette to watch him practice. He jumped off the floor immediately with the way that he plays, the style that he plays with, and his ability to work with his, with, within the system. There's Bowie cut off there. Shot clock at 10, nearly loses it. Barnheiser comes up with a tough fadeaway that rattles home. First two for Brooks Barnheiser. Again, I mentioned a native of Lafayette. In fact, his father, Mark, played one year at Purdue before transferring to Auburn. Brooks has got good size at that wing position. And then a foul reaching in there. It's going to go against Barnheiser. You're young. First team all Big Ten, in my opinion, the way he's playing has led to a resurgence for the Terrapins. Uh, he's been tremendous. The transfer from Charlotte has stepped right in and the straw that stirs the drink for that Maryland team. There's David Jenkins, a three ball that rattles out and the rebound corral by Robbie Barron. I like that action though. That was a, a little wrinkle to what Purdue had been doing and got Jenkins a wide open look. Bowie navigating in, throws up a floater, no, gets it back in, puts it in. Wow, Purdue, or Northwestern rather, really doing a good job of following their shots. 14 of their 16 points have been in the paint area so far. Back to a two-point game. There's Lawyer. Lawyer in on for Hoover, who blocks it. And the Wildcats try to save it, but it will go to Purdue. And I think they're going to have to look at the shot clock here because it looks like it has reset to 30. You see Lawyer getting downhill. Good timing by Verhoeven. Now they've got it back at 20. Titus Verhoeven actually led the Atlantic 10 in blocks as a freshman at Duquesne, a defensive specialist. Well, Chase Aldiz is really bothering Fletcher Lloyd, making him uncomfortable, continuing to keep contact on him. There's Trey Kaufman ran. And Nicholson on him, shot clock at four. Kaufman ran, goes to the hook, then rattles home. Trey Kaufman ran now 11 of his last 13 from the field over the last six games. Northwestern didn't double team him, but they, maybe they should. They, Trey Kaufman ran, can really, really post up. I mean, hard, gets deep. That was an easy jump hook. Adish fires it through the hands of Nicholson. As we take a look at the head coach of the Boilers, Matt Painter. Amazing run at Purdue. 407 wins. Made the last seven NCAA tourneys. Only thing missing, of course, is the Final Four. This is a team that... Certainly many people feel like can get there would be the first for Purdue since 1980 They are the number one overall seed right now in Mike Tocorsi's bracket it's Past the halfway point here in the first half Ethan Morton with a three ball that goes Ethan Morton does not score a whole lot. It's a big three there and extends the lead back out to seven. That's all Purdue needs Ethan Morton to do. Take the opportunities when they present themselves. He doesn't have to create on his own. And just keep the defense honest. Here's Bowie. Alley of Nicholson missed the jam. I think Nicholson could use a, a breather here. He's getting a little tired. Gillis for three. Dragon hop from the outside. Nine points now for Gillis. The lead is out to ten, the largest it's been for the Boilers. And the Purdue fans making themselves heard. Here's Bowie. Hits a three. Wow, great answer by Boo Bowie. 
Stepped up calmly. He had something to say to Mason Gillis when Gillis ran past him. Maybe trying to get in his head a little bit. Oilers well, five of nine behind the arc. There's Kaufman Wren. Shot clock under 10. Kaufman Wren back in the Nicholson stolen by Barron. Here come the Cats on the run. On each one on three. Nick Martinelli hits the floater, but a whistle. And a foul on the ball. Over on nearly 20% of their possessions. That is second in the Big Ten. They're second in the conference in steals. Seven games with 10 or more, which equals the total from the last two years combined. So this is a program that's been rebuilt on the defensive end. Well, I, I love the fact that this is how they plan to play their game. Nicholson problems with that one. Eating the block, but it's called the goaltend. And so the basket will go for the freshman, Nick Martinelli. I think that was on the way up, Dave. And Matt Painter seems to agree with you. No, I think that was on the way up. I think that was just a quick call, but no, that's a good block. Really close to the apex there. Smith is fouled by Bowie. Those are tough calls in the moment. They are. I agree. That and the block charge yeah. calls one. Really, really difficult. Yeah, very, very tough to get. Wade Smith has the moxie of an upperclassman. That time, drawing the contact against Boo Booey. Booey's in good position, but Wade Smith does a really good job in that situation. He's done it all season long. So Booey pleading his case there with Clarence Armstrong is. And I remember a few years back, he got away from getting the players that he liked in his system, and they had a poor season as a result. Smith hits both free throws. Now six points for him, and the Purdue lead back up to seven. As we look at this Purdue team, 23-2 and two on the season. And I want to remind our viewers, they get everybody's best shot every single game. I was asking Matt Painter about that today as Barry is fouled on the way to the basket. We'll get out about that before the game today, and he was saying to me, you know what? I don't even talk to them about that. I don't talk to them about being number one. I just say, go play the game, make your free throws, and don't throw the ball to the other team. I love that. <laughs> Which maybe is the most Matt Painter quote of all time. <laughs> that, that, that is totally <laughs> Matt Painter. Here's a stat that's incredible to me. Purdue has lost one game by double figures in the last two seasons. One. And that's amazing consistency. And now that you have the number one player in the country to go along with that, Quite evident why they're the number one team in the country. Have really built built a remarkable program. Here's Edie inside. He's been reasonably quiet. That's his first field goal. More than 12 minutes in, it gives Purdue a seven-point lead. Should let you know the foul before the break was on Fletcher Lawyer, so he has two fouls, as does Brooks Barnheiser on the other side. Well, good defense by Jenkins. I thought Barry was going to turn the corner. Shot clock at 10. They funnel Adige into Edie. Shot clock at 5. Ty Barry's going to have to get something out. Barry. Little leader. No. Nicholson gets it up and in. Well, Ty Barry did the right thing. He didn't settle for a contested jump shot. He got downhill. And positive things happen when you get to the rim. Six early points for Matthew Nicholson. Here's Edie again. Smith on the drive, leaves it for Edie, or did he? No, offensive foul. It's going to go against Edie, and that is a rarity. Uh, he certainly pushed Nicholson in the back there. I don't think there's any question about that. No, the thing is, though, Edie feels like he tapped Nicholson, but it's 7 4. <laughs> 290 plus when you tap somebody they're gonna move a little bit. Yeah, you kind of feel that yeah when he taps you <laughs> I like the fact he's trying to argue his point uh, He famously has more block shots than fouls this year, so he does not get called for many There's Martinelli the freshman with the runner that doesn't go and Edie with the board for Purdue They've made their last four from the field where the Baker shooting 56% early on in this game the three out of the corner that rattles out 
from first, and Barron has the rebound for Northwestern. Bobby Barron's done a good job. He hadn't scored a lot tonight or this afternoon, but he's been active on the glass. Now Wildcats turn it over. Smith in transition. Here's Jenkins with a head fake in the pull-up. Not there. Battle for the board. Morton's got it for Purdue and a fresh 20 for the Boilers. I like the way the Boilers have changed up where they're getting Zach Eady the basketball. They're getting him in the middle of the lane, so it's much tougher to double-team him if you're Northwestern. Shot clock at five. Have to put it up. Nice defense by Barron. Here's Smith with a leaner that doesn't go. Rebound off Eady's hands. Here's Adige on the break. In on Jenkins. And they call a foul on Morton. On the floor, says Roger Ayers. Oh, that's a good call. Just wanted to see on that basket by Nicholson whether or not he actually beat the clock. He clearly did. It is out of his hands before the shot clock hit zero. So no doubt there. Well, Northwestern getting some breaks here in the first half. Here's Bowie for three. He rims out. Jenkins has it for Purdue. Nation's number one team up five. More down in the corner. Battle for the board. And we got a hell ball, so that one will go to Northwestern. Second hell ball here of the first half. Purdue's won 11 straight against the Wildcats. They have beat Northwestern 134 times, their most wins against any opponents. This, of course, would be a quad one win for Purdue. They've got nine of them. Only Kansas and Texas have more nationally, and have far and away the best quad one win percentage in the nation. Adige for three. Does it go? Gillis has the rebound. Adige been fighting his shot a little bit here recently. Oh, man, what a move. And a scoop there. Doesn't go, though. And Bowie's got it for Northwestern. Oh, he tried to get it to Adige and threw it over his head. A rare turnover there for Northwestern, one of the lowest turnover teams by percentage in the country. That is the fourth, though, in the first half for the Wildcats. See Chris Collins there urging some patience from his team. Northwestern, in spite of the three-point barrage by Purdue, in pretty good shape here in the first half. Neither team has scored in nearly three minutes. Edie trying to change that. Gets an inside block from behind by Verhoeven. Will send him to the free throw line. Let's check in again with Andy. So defending Zach Eady and also officiating Zach Eady, and I think Stephen will agree with me, has been a chore for everyone this season. And Purdue is very frustrated about it because Zach Eady, and it's hard, you know, say, oh, he's 7 4, he's so big, but he gets beaten up throughout the course of a game and not a lot of calls, doesn't go to the line a ton. And, you know, this is a learning curve really for these officials because no one is like him in the college game. He is a unicorn, and officials are not used to trying to officiate someone like Zach Eady, and it has been a source of frustration for Purdue. Well, that's a great point, Andy, but it's been a source of frustration for the rest of the Big Ten <laughs> that a lot of coaches feel like Eady camps in the lane, and he doesn't get called for three-second violations. So this little bit, it goes both ways, in my opinion. And the crazy thing is technically because of the COVID year, Zach Eady technically has two more seasons. He could come back. Uh, now a turnover there as Newman intercepts it. Here's Morton. Out of the corner, Gillis. Rattles out. Barnheiser playing with two fouls has a rebound. Northwestern uncharacteristically careless here with the ball, Steven, in the first half. I think they're a little juiced up. All this energy in the building, though they're playing number one team, I think they're moving a little bit too quickly for their comfort zone on this end of the floor. Shot clock at eight. Here's Bowie. 
Trying to navigate free. He gets something up there on the rim. Ortiz drops it for Verhoeven. Blocked away, but it'll go to the line as Brandon Newman called for that foul. I know Northwestern fans would be more comfortable if they could get this one and a, and a couple more, but I think this Northwestern team is well positioned for a tournament bid. Thomas Verhoeven, not a great foul shooter, misses that one. He's under 50% on the year. Yeah, it kind of feels like, and I know this game's being hyped up, and I'm not in any way minimizing the importance of this game, but they're at a point now where they just need to accumulate wins. I it agree. doesn't really matter who they come against. That's they probably right. need to win two more games to yes. feel pretty good. Now, if you beat someone, the quality of Purdue or Indiana who's coming in this week, obviously that resonates more right. with the committee, but... They pick up two more, no matter which two they are. They probably feel good. I, I would feel good about it if I were them. And like you said, their road success, the teams that they beat, and their resume speak for themselves. Here's Smith. Kicks it out to Gillis. He's been hot early. Now Edie working on Nicholson. Goes to that hook and hits it. What a great ball moving by Purdue. And then get it to Edie late where the, the double team can't come. He's going to make those. See, just three field goal attempts for Edie so far in this game. The Western's done a pretty good job of limiting him, but his teammates have been red hot behind the arc. Here's Barnheiser with a three that doesn't go. Northwestern has really struggled to hit threes. They're one of seven from three-point range. Newman, Chris Collins wanted to walk, didn't get it. I think Matthew, Matthew Nicholson has done a great job defensively. I mean, he works his tail off. It is hard to hard hedge and then get back and stop me. Bowie with the teardrop into double figures now for the 19th straight time, extending his career long streak. Yeah, Matthew Nicholson, I mean, he, for all intents and purposes, is a freshman. I mean, he barely played in his first two years, 88 total minutes. And he set that screen to get Bowie free to go downhill. His work is impressive. Shot clock at seven. Smith got to get something going here. Got Barry on him. That's a good thing to get going. And Nicholson fouls ED. When in doubt, throw it to the 7 4 guy. First foul on Nicholson. I think that's a beautiful lead pass by Braden Smith. Smith was frustrated with something there. But I thought that action there to get Edie the basketball in that position, that was excellent. He misses the free throw. Coming up, stick around for the State Farm Halftime Report. Rick Pizzo, Rafael Davis, and the aforementioned Mike Sporcy. Bracketologist extraordinaire standing by. Just down the road a piece in our Chicago studio. Edie hits one of two from the line, now up to eight points, and the lead up to seven for the Boilers. Yeah, I'm sure Rayfield Davis is sweating bullets back in the studio watching his Purdue Boilermakers here. Maybe not sweat bullets, he's but... A, he's a cool customer. No, no, he's definitely cool on the air. Look out about that. There's Adige trying to make something happen, and it is swatted away by Newman. Barry gets it, though. Not there. Western's offensive struggles continue here. Purdue, though, not exactly lighting it up here of late. Just one of seven from the field in the last few minutes. Newman trying to change that, but it rattles out. And Adige has it for Northwestern. About 14 seconds shot clock and game clock for Chris Collins. 41 seconds to go here. Where do you go if you're Northwestern? Oh, there's going to be some high ball screen action with Bowie. He's the stir. That, that he's a straw that stirs the pot here for Northwestern and I don't expect anything different He's got Morton on him Seven point lead for Purdue. They've led for all but about four minutes in this game Bowie on the dribble drive picks it in the corner for a three from Audis and as it go Martinelli the offensive board Barnheiser now why don't you hold the ball there Steven? I think he got caught up there a little bit. And then a foul on Barron. The scoreboard at halftime. All right. Well, that explains it. Purdue is in the bonus here. 
with Edie, and he will get the one and one. Ronald Kluver explaining that one to us. I'm not sure I've ever heard that before. I have not heard that either. Obviously, the women's game, they play quarters, and so the bonus is different. And Edie able to hit both free throws. So Zach Edie into double figures. 42nd straight game as he extends the longest streak in the power conferences. And the lead back out to nine. Oh, nice screen by Nicholson. Now Bowie is fouled. That'll be just six on Purdue. They had one to give there. Foul number one on Caleb first. So now you see... Chris Collins trying to get Barnheiser back into the game. It's just going to be probably space out for Bowie. I'm not sure they want to bring a, a ball screen action in, in this scenario. Well, yes, they have. There's Bowie on the drive, gets it up on the glass and in. Boo Bowie so crafty, gives Northwestern a little momentum. So if he doesn't get going quickly. Northwestern could be in for a long second half. They just had seven straight double-figure games in Northwestern. The poor three-point shooting, really a problem for them because it's the way they get so many of their points. They had 12 against Ohio State in that win in Columbus. They try to get it inside to first, knocked out of bounds as we check in with Andy. Yeah, I just spoke with Chris Collins, and he was actually pretty pleased with that first half thought for the most part defensively they did a good job especially on the offensive backboard since they got to rotate guys a little bit more because we saw gas back nicholson got and he said these first four minutes are going to be critical to get off the good start that's what he stressed and offensively got to tighten up missed a couple of too many bunnies there in that first half well, they've certainly done a good enough job on this end as purdue nearly turns it over they get it back though now the shot clock reset and Chris Collins is going crazy, saying he thinks it, it should be a shot clock violation. Well, I thought Ty Berry had control of it. He just lost it. I thought he had two hands on the basketball. He got a little too happy. Watch Ty Berry. He's got I'm too happy. He started thinking of uh, moments of grandeur before he retained possession. So here's where it gets interesting. The shot clock was under 10 there, Stephen, and now... We've had eight seconds run off of it. So it's going to be an interesting decision here for the officials as to kind of where you go. I see the shot clock up at top. So, so it's at six when Smith gets that ball, and then we've had eight seconds of laps. This is why I love calling games and not officiating. <laughs> Because at this time of the year, each possession is so critical in conference play. We've seen a number of situations come down in the second half or down the stretch of games. So Purdue has stagnated a little bit offensively here, Stephen. And they are just one of their last eights from the field. It is, in fact, a shot clock violation on Purdue. And, you know, I guess the question then becomes if the players don't know Right, right. You get the ball and you exactly. think there's 30 on the shot clock. That's just a tough spot to put everyone in. I, I don't I know totally that there's agree. a great I don't know that there's a great solution for it. I, I totally agree. Because certainly there would have been a different sense of urgency if they looked up and saw six on the shot clock. I I'm in a, I'm in agreement with Matt Painter. It's it's you know, it's not that the officials got it wrong, it's just the ruling. It just penalizes the team, penalizes Purdue in that situation. So first possession of the second half for Northwestern. Got a dunk on the game's opening possession from Nicholson. Great Smith doing a good job of covering Audiz. Here's Bowie on the drive, runs into Edie. Bowie in the lane for a while there and just had to throw it up. And Edie blocks it away and walks back down the court with a little bit of a smile, wry smile on his face. Now stolen by Bowie. He's got Barry with him. Bowie navigates through, leaning in. It doesn't go, but it'll go to the free throw line. I would have liked to see 
Hooley try to make that pass. You got a two on one situation. He's passed Fletcher Lawyer. Well, maybe not. He made the right decision. From my angle, I thought there was a, a place to put a bounce pass, but college basketball doesn't run traditional fast breaks anymore. Yeah. I don't think anyone does. Uh, that's true. Good <laughs> point. NBA, NBA doesn't either. It's Bowie hits the first free throw. That is 14 for Boo Booey. Chris Collins was just effusive in his praise to me regarding Boo Booey when we talked yesterday. He said, what an absolute Rockies fan. Uh, offensive rebound there by Nicholson off the miss. A good hustle by Matthew Nicholson. An uncharacteristic miss for Boo Booey. He's nearly 90% at the line, but he's missed a few here over the last few games. Per Purdue, a premier rebounding ball club. Northwestern battling them. Oh, he's swatted away again by Edie. Here comes the lawyer now. Good job getting back defensively by Northwestern. In particular, Boo Boo, he went to the floor, but got up, got back quickly. He has turned it over in its first two possessions here of the second half after committing just three in the first half. That one doesn't go. Edie knocked back out. Now the three. There from Smith, Edie going for the board there. It'll be Northwestern ball. Well, Dave, let's take a look at that last block. Bowie getting downhill. And there's just <laughs> no way he's going to get that off. Good D without fouling by Zach Eden. I mean, Boo Bowie is as crafty as they come, but that is a no-win proposition going in there on Edie. And now another ill-advised pass trying to get it back door, although Chris Collins kind of letting Adige have it a little bit. You see the frustration on his face. Well, Chase Adige's body language is poor right now. And you've got a chance to beat the number one team in the country. You're only down six even after that turnover. You just got to move on to the next play. A great call by Purdue. And a better trap by Northwestern. My goodness. I'm not sure that Zach Eady has seen a harder trap. Look at that. Caleb first is open. Look how hard Barron and Nicholson came on Eady to force that turnover. That is great defense. Be a little early for the overrated chant. Well, and that's why <laughs> players don't necessarily like what fans do. That. <laughs> Bowie's got 16, and Northwestern cuts it to four. And now this crowd coming to life here in Evanston. A great atmosphere. This has been from the get-go. Lawyer. Boy, look at this Northwestern defense scramble. His first goes in to the lane and just gets massacred in there. Nice cut by Caleb first to try to offset the aggressive nature at, at which the Wildcats are attacking Edie. I mean, Zach Edie's trying to talk to the officials, and if you look at his arms, he, he's got the scars to support what he's saying to the officials. The foul was on Barry. That is his first. And Caleb first. Now has five points. I mean, it is a physical league, but to your point, Stephen, I don't know if all of those are from today. And yeah, those are deep gashes. Those are, yeah. First just a 60% foul shooter, but he hits them both. Northwestern certainly has a tempo to their liking. And try to grind out some half court buckets. Oh, he got Smith caught up. Oh, the team's really needed that one. Robbie Barron called the adjustment on that play. Heads up play by Robbie Barron. Smith inside Edie, and Barron will send him to the line. 
What'd you see on the offensive end for Barron, Steven? Dave, Northwestern was trying to run a particular action. Barron changed it, went down and screened Braden Smith to get Chase off these open for a three look. That might be the play of the game for Northwestern. That's excellent recognition by Robbie Barron. They were originally trying to go to Ty Berry. He waved it off, gave up the ball, went down and, and headhunted Braden Smith to bring Chase Aldeej open for that look. Edie now 7 of 9 at the free throw line, right around his season percentage, which is a hair over 74. A nice touch for the big man. He's now got a dozen. Again, all but four of those coming from the strike. Westerns has some success in the half-court sets here. How will Purdue adjust? Here's Adij. I got to get Barron going as well. Now he throws it away. I know your money's well spent. That is tuition money well spent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Oh, I love it. Got to love it. Five-point lead here for the Boilers over the Wildcats. I like this use of a little bit of pressure and giving Purdue a different look. Edie with the jam, and he's fouled. Ooh, and given the bitter beer face look afterwards, I love it. Nice adjustment, Purdue getting Edie in the center of the floor. Just pivots, goes strong with the growl and then the stare. Zach Eady dominated in the paint. And look at the look at the stare like what? That just produced first field goal in seven minutes. I mean, if you would have told Matt Painter you're going to have a seven minute field goal drought and you'd still be up by seven points. Uh, he would have taken that in a heartbeat. Well, that speaks to their defense. Who's done a really good job here of limiting in particular this man with the basketball, Chase Aldean. There's Bowie navigating through. Shot clock at five. Not sure he knows it. Audij does. He'll try the three. Not there. But Western could have used that one from Audij. Well, I tell you what. Bowie yelling at his teammates. But that has a lot to do with the Boilers' defense. Suffocating right now. And now another turnover. Here's Barry two on two with Bowie. Bowie in on Morton. Three on Ethan Morton, and Bowie will go to the free throw line. Boy, that, that's a heady play by Bowie. Braden Smith getting too deep on the penetration. Turnover, watch Bowie going to the body. Knowing exactly that Morton is trying to set up for the charge. Bowie initiates the contact. Concentration bucket. So Bowie will try to finish off the three-point play, really having a phenomenal afternoon. He has carried Northwestern. They really have not gotten much from really anyone other than him. Uh, Nicholson's had a few dunks inside, but it has been almost exclusively the Boo Booey show for the Wildcats. Now with 19 points, and Northwestern has clawed back to within four. And I love this 2-2-1 pressure. Something they talked about in the shoot around today. Chris Collins said just to disrupt the rhythm yes. a little bit. Produce such a machine offensively was the word that he used. Now Edie with deep post position. Zach oh. Edie's starting to come alive. Yes, he is, and he's he's letting the crowd know about it as well. Just those slight adjustments by Matt Painter and his staff to get Edie the ball in the middle of the paint to where the, the help side has too far to come. Adij on the floor, and they turn it over. That is eight turnovers now for the Wildcats, and the frustrations continue for Chase Adij. And Adij, I think he wanted to take advantage of Braden Smith switching on to him. Obviously, he has a size advantage, but good help defense. I believe that was Mason Gillis. They got a hand in there to force the turnover. 
Here's Smith on the drive, cut off by Bowie. Edie again, the deep post position. What has changed here, Steven? He's catching the ball in the center of the paint where he was going block to block early on. Now he's catching at the Big Ten emblem or slightly lower. And there's no way for the, the help defense to get there. How much of a difference is it with Verhoeven on him rather than Nicholson, just in the difference of four inches? Well, it's four inches that's a little bit more size than Nicholson. And Verhoeven is doing his best, but there's not a lot you can do when Zach catches that close to the bucket. That is a tough matchup as Bowie is fouled on his way to the basket. That is number two on Newman. You look at some of the incredible numbers on Edie, and we could go on and on, but I mean, Think about this. He has six games with 30 or more points and 10 or more rebounds. Everyone else in the Big Ten combined has five. Yeah, that's, that's why he's a top player in the country right now. Just his output is outstanding. And here's the thing. He's not he's not taking 15 to 20 shots to get those numbers. He's so efficient. He has 20 double-doubles. He's four rebounds away here tonight. Or today, I suppose. Here's Perry for three. And Northwestern just cannot buy a basket from the outside, and it goes out to Purdue. The shooting woes continue. Ty Berry, just 15 points the last five games combined, coming in after that 26-point game against Nebraska. He's got four here. But if you can't hit those, Steve, you're not going to win the game. Oh, no, you're not going to beat Purdue if you don't take advantage of those opportunities, for sure. Trying to get it back door, and the loose ball... Controlled by Verhoeven. Wow, great effort by Ty Berry on the save. Come up with the possession. I don't know if our viewers have noticed. It has gotten physical. Audige hits the pull-up. That's five for Chase Audige. It's back to a six-point game. Played a lot of this game in kind of the six to yep. ten-point window with Purdue on top. Here's Gillis, hit three in the first half. That one doesn't go. And Edie is fouled, going for the rebound. And Bowie gives the exasperated, what am I supposed to do look. It's actually, I guess it looks like it'll go against Verhoeven. So that is number two on him. My apologies to Boo. Uh, coming up, Rick Pizzo, Mike DeCorsi, Ray Felt Davis, discussing the major stories in college hoops, Big Ten basketball and beyond is next here on Big Ten Network. Lawyer and Bowie bumps him, so the foul starting to add up on Northwestern. It's number five on the Cats, and Bowie does indeed pick up his second foul now. Well, I'm not surprised by that. Bowie, you got to close out on the catch for Fletcher Lawyer. He's so good in that scenario. Bowie trying to get there just loses his balance. Smith puts it up on the glass, not there, and Nicholson has it. Here's Bowie now on the break. Bowie leaves it for Martinelli, and it is a foul, but not a goaltend. Northwestern wanted the goaltend. Instead, it's a foul on Gillis. I like Martinelli going to the bucket. See, Gillis goes straight up and down. There's Brandon Newman on the backside, but... Definitely got it before no, it hit the glass. Yeah, Remember, it, was... it hits the glass above the rim. It is an automatic goaltend no matter what. Martinelli has struggled at the free throw line. He's now just four of nine. He had originally committed to Elon. He decommitted after a coaching change there. Had some familiarity with Northwestern's program. His brother Dom was a walk-on at Northwestern before transferring. And had some high majors poking around in addition to Northwestern. Xavier in Utah, but... Committed to the Cats and been pretty good here for Chris Collins. Didn't necessarily expect him to play much this year, but Julian Roper's still out with an injury that's going to keep him out a while, according to Collins. And so Mark Mellon's been pressed into service. Here's Edie. The double comes and the foul is called. And if that's on Barnheiser, it is. That is his. And Kansas have more, but the quad one win percentage for Matt Painter's team far and away the best in the country. Uh, I don't think there's any question about 
Get me an overall number one seed. Just Got being Bowie with the steal. Got a clear lane to the hoop, but here comes Gillis. Runs him over and a foul. It's indisputably a very hard foul with a clear intent to foul. But again, what you know, to the basketball play there is yeah. the I mean you don't want to get you don't want to let Bowie get it up on the glass. And Bowie, who again is a fabulous foul shooter, is is really struggling at the line. He does hit the second one, and it'll be Northwestern ball. Now look at Matt Painter. He's telling them the foul. Yes, absolutely. And so they're only doing what their coach instructed them to do. But it did. It did look pretty hard there. 20 points for Bowie. It's the ninth time that he has hit 20 this season. Four-point game. Bowie, little floater. Back heel and out. Morton chases it down for the Boilers. A missed opportunity there for Northwestern. A chance to get four points on the possession. They got just one. Watch Gillis on this. As the ball goes inside to Edie, watch Gillis on the backside. Shot clock at six. Here's Morton on the spin. Hanging in the air. Ethan Morton hits. <laughs> Where has that been? Oh, I looked at Matt Painter. He had a look like, oh, wow, okay. We'll take it. It's a big-time move. Late shot clock scenario. Ethan Morton averaged about 23 points per game in his high school career, but has been more of a, a glue guy for Purdue. Shot clock at 10 here. Adij for three. Off the mark, and Morton the rebound. You know, 40, almost 50 percent of Northwestern's points that come from Ardiz and Bowie. Ardiz just cannot find the range. Here's Edie. The double comes again. Good ball movement in the corner. Jenkins, well short. Ardiz has the board. Northwestern just two of 13 behind the arc. Team that is ninth in the Big Ten in conference play in three point percentage. It's not a great shooting team. Audis, that's a long two. That doesn't go either. And Edie the rebound. Yeah, Audis is, is upset with himself. He got a decent look. A oh, nice feed there, and a foul is called on Martinelli. That is his first as Gillis cutting through the lane. Good action here by Purdue. Gillis cut right to the bucket. Mart Martinelli is in the way there, blocking his path. I know Northwestern fans don't like it. That's the correct call. It's been a very physical game. And so now Gillis going to the free throw line, co-captain for this team. That doesn't go. Edie grabs the rebound and calls for a foul. That is his second, so Edie called going over the back. Well, Clarence Armstrong, the official, made the movement as Edie put his knee in the back of Nicholson. I didn't see it. Yeah, I didn't see that either. As Andy said, he is a difficult guy yeah. to officiate. Yeah. It is really, it is not easy. He's just so much bigger than everyone else out there. Look how far Northwestern has to initiate their offense. Purdue's defense has been stifling here. And Bowie is fouled by Morton. That is four on Ethan Morton. And Northwestern will shoot the one and one. The team see the bonus the rest of the way. Wow. 
I understand Ethan Morton's frustration there, but that's an incredible stat. It is indeed. He's even at 2-2 today, his two blocks and two fouls. But it is pretty remarkable how well Zach Eady has done staying out of foul trouble this year. It shows you his discipline on the defensive end. He'll give up some plays not to cause a foul. And he understands how big he is to, to really make it difficult on, on guys. 22 for Bowie. It's down to a four-point game. Northwestern again showing the pressure. That's a turnover. That's 10 seconds. It is indeed a 10-second second violation. And so, Dave, I don't understand why more teams don't do this to Purdue. We see Maryland do it. We see Iowa do it to some success. You just can't let Purdue walk up and get into their offense. They're too good. Seventh turnover of the half for the Boilers. Here's Bowie on the drive. Try to wheel and deal. Does it go? And the rebound controlled by first. It is just a challenge when you get in there with Edie staring you down. Well, you, you can't get too deep on the penetration. You got to pull up. Wide open Newman. Does it go? And Barnheiser has the rebound. And Northwestern again with a chance to cut it to two or one. Were they to make a three? Here's Barnheiser on the move. And on Edie. There's block number three. And here's Smith. Dave, you think as a player, you figure out that Edie's <laughs> tall and he can block shots? You just can't take it all the way to the hole. Block from behind by the Wildcats. And now Barnheiser and Barry. Audini's for three. He does not go. And his struggles continue. That was a poor decision. They're not going to tie the game up with a three-point shot there. You're struggling already. You try to get something going towards the bucket. Frustration from Chris Collins. I mean, they have done everything you can do on the defensive end. They've helped Purdue to four field goals in the second half. The issue is they've only hit four of themselves. Well, one of the one of the things that we're noticing the trend here in the second half. Bowie and Aldiz have 14 of the 15 points for Northwestern in the second half. So Purdue is able to load up on those guys. Ty Berry, Barnheiser, Bobby Barron and company have not produced anything offensively. I mean, truth be told, really no one other than Bowie has produced anything offensively. Aldiz does have five. But again, it's just been a massive struggle for him. Shot clock at 10. Here's Verhoeven. Now Bowie will try a three. He rattles out. And Smith the other way. Northwestern down 2 of 15 from three-point range. Caleb first is being guarded by Ty Berry. There's got to be a way for Purdue to take advantage of this. Inside Edie, the double team comes first. Loses it inside, gets it back, puts it up. No, Edie taps it. No, battle for the board. And Edie, what a great play to save it off of Barnheiser. And it will be Purdue's ball. I mean, Caleb first got fouled twice. Edie got fouled on going after the basketball. And look at this play. Heads up play by Zach Eady to retain possession for Purdue. Northwestern got away with a few uh, hard fouls there, in my opinion. Six point lead for the Boilermakers. Shot clock will be at 19 here. Newman open for three. That does not go. And Barry. Able to rebound now. Edie and Nicholson were tangled up. And Matt Painter saying that was a, a hook, he thought, a hook and hold perhaps on Northwestern. 
I wish we'd take that rule out of the game. I really do. Good miss for Adige. Newman the rebound. But your lawyer's big trouble. Let's see if he can provide some floor spacing here. Edie over Nicholson gets it to go. Matt Painter wants a foul, doesn't get it. It has been so physical on both ends, Stephen. No, there's no question about it. You know, you're trying to upset the number one team in the country. You're bringing extra effort every single possession. Here's Bowie. Runner doesn't go. Nicholson the rebound and Edie fouled him. That will uh, number three on Edie. They're going to look to see whether there was a hook and hold here. I mean, they're certainly hooked up. I don't know that you can argue that either initiated it, Stephen. I, I don't know. You you tell me. Play on. It's a non-issue. Play on. Nicholson is a poor foul shooter. He's at 48% on the year. Shooting a one and one here. And leaves that one short. And after the loose ball goes to first. I mean, first got hammered on that rebound. He did. And he's maintaining his composure. Great look. Northwestern has missed its last nine from the field. One of their last 11. Bowie on the drive. The reverse goes. Now that's how you go with Zach Eady. You can't go through his chest. You've got to utilize the rim as a deterrent for the shot block. Bowie, nice, nice adjustment by Bowie. Bowie now has more than half of Northwestern's points. So they can get no one else going. But he has been outstanding. Adige knocks that one away. Six to shoot for Purdue. The hesitation, you go at him, but you you use the reverse. You can't just go through Zach Eady's chest. He's not the he's not the average big in college basketball. Nice job by Boo Booey. Morton back out there with the four fouls. Shot clock at three. Lawyer, air ball. Ethan Morton's got four fouls now. We gotta watch this. Bowie for three. Not there. Maybe a little bit of a quick trigger, although no one else can score. So. Yeah, I mean, if he's got daylight with one of the premier defenders on him, he needs to look for that. Edie. The hook shot goes. Boy, Edie threw that chicken wing that time. He's like, nope, I'm not waiting for the double. I'm going to clear some space to get this jump jump hook down. And Chris Collins takes time out. It's to begin with, but Purdue doing a good job of keeping the other guys in check. The crazy thing is, as much as we talk about their defense, Northwestern actually sixth in the Big Ten. As Barry tries a three, that does not go. Bowie the rebound. Now out of the corner, Adige finally hits one. A big shot for Adige that they desperately needed. I was going to say, Stephen, they're actually sixth in the Big Ten in offensive efficiency in conference play and ninth in defensive efficiency. Adige the steal. Adige the slam. Timeout, Purdue. Send up the stoop body. Yeah, that, that is that, here. That was amazing that you shared that with me, and it, it makes total sense. So this is a uh, this is great support. And now a steal, but Ortiz called for the foul. Boy, Brayton Smith was fortunate in that regard. I'd we, like to see that one again. Yeah, we've seen far more contact 
Oh, I don't know. I think that was that. Ooh. Wow. Boy, Purdue caught a break there. Did they ever. Well, there's some contact. There is some contact on the body. I think, I think the, from ball that was, angle. the ball was tipped before the yeah. contact occurred. That's a break. That's a break for Purdue. Smith so dependable from the line. Better than 88%. Hits the first one. The seventh leading freshman scorer in the Big Ten. Again, was rated 198th in the nation as a recruit by 24-7. Rivals did not rank him. And he stepped into the toughest league in the country and just been phenomenal. He sure has. And for him to have the moxie to even think that he could beat two guys off the bounce like that tells you a lot about his confidence level. Here's Adige. Fade away pull up rattle. Tell you what, Brandon Newman couldn't have been in any better position defensively. That's just better offense. Adige with a dozen all in the second half. Morton hit one earlier. Doesn't go. And Barnheiser's got the board. And a foul. Wow, Caleb first reaching in. That was not necessary in that scenario. And now you send Barnheiser to the line. Things kind of playing into the favor here of Northwestern in the last couple minutes. Brooks Barnheiser just two points after that career high 19 against Ohio State. The Lafayette native fourth in Mr. Basketball. He is the 16th all-time leading scorer in Indiana high school history. Just saying a lot. And there have been a lot of good players. Uh, no doubt. For the biggest Big Ten experience, there's no plus like home. The Big Ten Plus app powered by Big Ten Network. Download and subscribe now. Barnheiser hits both free throws. This is the closest Northwestern has been here in the second half. It's a one-point game. Smith able to get it across. Well, watch how hard they're trying to deny Zach Eady the basketball. Now they're doubling. Oh, good, good hands. They're doubling off the passer. Shot clock at five. Stripped away. And Northwestern has it. The Wildcats could take the lead. They have not led since it was two to nothing. Chris Collins directing traffic. Bowie again runs into Edie. Adige with 10. Here's Barnheiser with 7. Adige for 3. Good. And Purdue calls timeout. For the last counter that Northwestern did on doubling to Edie in the post. Brooks Barnheiser was the assigned guy to go in the double. Let's see what Purdue does on the adjustment. You gotta believe they're gonna try to get it to number 15 here. Smith turns it over. See, I've, been, I've always thought this. One of the things that I don't like what Braden Smith does he gets in the air too much. Did it against Indiana yeah. as well at a critical juncture late in that game. When you leave your feet, everyone except LeBron James is susceptible when you leave your feet in those scenarios. Tenth turnover of the half for Purdue. Northwestern on a 12-2 run. There's Nicholson. A oh, great read for three. Rims out and kill us the rebound. Oh man, Brandon Newman was playing the play. Oh, Deans went the other way. He got a clean look. Edie is swarmed and he turns it over. Barry. They win it in. Barnheiser. Smith on the drive and he's fouled. 
Wow. Braden Smith, what a heady play. There was no way that he was going to score that. Look at the steal. Barnhides on the backside. Gets a lead pass for the easy deuce. I tell you what, Braden Smith, he may have stopped the bleeding there because he was not going to score that layup, but he drew the contact. That's a heady play. And he misses the free throw. Again, Smith, 88% on the season. His first free throw miss. Got to keep Edie off the glass here where he to miss this one. He does not. That's nine points now for Smith. And shot clock and game clock are even here. So Purdue's going to have to foul, and they do. Northwestern shooting two the rest of the way, as is Purdue. That fouls on Braden Smith, his first. And so Ty Berry will shoot for the Cats. So pretty much you're looking at a scenario where if Northwestern can stay strong with the basketball and convert on their free throws, they might walk out of here with one of the biggest upsets of the season. So Barry to shoot two. Northwestern's hit five of his last six from the field after starting five of 20 here in the second half and Barry misses the free throw. He will have one more. Try to make it a two possession game. One of two for Ty Barry. Here's Smith on the move. Gillis, long three, air ball, it goes out of bounds. Who is it all? Smith on the move. Lost the ball. Booty's got it for Northwestern. And he is fouled. That foul is on Fletcher Lawyer. Boy, I tell you what, these Northwestern Wildcats, <laughs> hey, they are something else. Watch the defensive play. Bowie with the quick hands comes up with the steal. I mean, the defensive effort from Northwestern this second half. It's something to hang their hat on for the rest of the season. Five point lead now for the Cats. Bowie hits them both. And Purdue will. The broad side of a barn is parts of this game. This and is he has a, come alive. This is a team, Stephen, that was picked 13th in the Big Ten, other than by the people who picked them 14th. Here's Edie, loses the ball. Barry has it for Northwestern. Will Purdue foul? They will not. The improbable season has taken an impossible turn. Northwestern. Has